Hi everyone, so I want to continue discussing the uh, concept of electron or orbital penetration which I um, talked about in the previous video. So the idea here again is to remember that for uh, a certain type of uh, orbital at the same principal quantum number, uh, some orbitals can actually have probability of being found in the lower orbital space. So for example here we're showing in the previous video I talked about the idea that when you look at the 2s orbital, the 2s orbital has a probability of being found in the 1s space and that small probability when added with the larger probability of the 2s orbital, when you average between these two what you find is the uh, average probability of the uh, 2s orbital electron is a little bit closer to the nucleus in comparison to the 2p orbital which is illustrated in red here which doesn't have that little uh, bump uh, associated with the 2s orbital and because the 2s orbital is a little closer to nucleus that makes the 2s orbital overall a more stable orbital compared to the 2p orbital and this little bump here this little probability that uh, allows the 2s orbital to go into the 1s orbital is what we refer to as orbital penetration and I mentioned um, before that this happens also with 3s orbitals it also happens with 4s or uh, I mean 4s orbitals and so on. In fact, this happens with every uh, uh, pretty much happens uh, according to this ranking that's shown right here. Okay, so if we're talking about a uh, uh, if we're talking about the orbitals at the same principal quantum number level, in other words, we're talking about all four or uh, n equals four orbitals, for example, or all n equals three orbitals the ranking of the energy always goes like this the s orbitals of that level would always be more stable in other words lower in energy in comparison to the p orbital of the same level so in other words if we're talking about level 4 the 4s orbital would always be more stable than the 4p orbital correspondingly the p orbital of that level would always be more stable than the d orbital of that level and the reason for this is also because of penetration. And lastly, the d orbital of that same level would always be more stable than the f orbital of the same level as well. So in other words, if we're comparing 4d and 4f, 4d would always be more stable than 4f. And again, that's uh, the reason for that is because of penetration. Uh, and again, let me just show you another example because earlier I was showing you the example with 2, 2s versus 2p in terms of penetration let me now show you the comparison of n equals 3 orbitals okay in other words the 3d 3p and 3s remember that when n is equal to 3 when the principal quantum number is equal to 3 you have the possibility of having either an s a p or a d orbital in fact if you look uh, right here this is basically kind of the outline of what's allowed and what's not allowed at the n equal 3 level uh, but we talked about this when we discussed quantum numbers, what orbitals are allowed at a given principal quantum number. If you look at the probability, the radial probability plot for the 3D orbital, you notice that this is the plot right here, the one shown in red. Okay? Clearly there's no penetration whatsoever, right? Because the probability just goes down to zero as you approach, as, as you approach the nucleus. If we look at the corresponding 3P orbital, okay, now you see that there's an actual uh, penetration. You can see that the p orbital has a um, has a, uh, some electron density here, and then it has a node, but then it has another electron density located at this level. So when you add these two together, that makes the p orbital a little bit closer to the nucleus in comparison to the 3d orbital. So that makes the p the 3p orbital more stable than the 3d orbital. What happens if you look at the 3s orbital? Interestingly, when you look at the 3s orbital, you see that there is two levels of penetration now. The 3s orbital can not only penetrate into the 2, the n equals 2 level, but it could also penetrate to the n equals 1 level. Okay? So in other words, there's more penetration associated with the 3s orbital, and as a result, that makes 3s orbital even more stable than the 3p orbital. Uh, so because it's located even slightly closer to the nucleus compared to the 3p orbital okay so that goes back to this ranking that I just talked about the fact that when you're talking about at a particular given level particular principal quantum number uh, 
this ranking always holds. In, the, in other words, the S orbital is always more stable than the P, uh, which is always more stable than D, which is always more stable than the F, off the same level. And what that causes, uh, uh, that causes a change in the energy diagram of these polyelectronic atom. And the change is the following. Before, when we look at the, mul uh, the single electron atom, I'm going to show you that energy diagram again. You remember that the 2s and the 2p are both have, they, they both have the same energy. And the reason for this is because if you remember going back to the uh, equation for uh, the binding energy for the um, one electron system, the only thing this energy depends on is the value of z and n. So if n is a certain value, then the binding energy would have that same value regardless of what the type of orbital is. And in fact, we made these calculations before to show that 2s and 2p orbital have the same exact energy. And this is what we call degenerate orbitals. With the multi-electron system, because of shielding, the 2s now is slightly more stable than the 2p. So in other words, the 2s is no longer degenerate with the 2p, but the 2s is actually more stable than the 2p. Same thing when you look at the level 3, when you look at n equals 3 level, 3s is more stable than 3p, 3p is more stable than 3d. When you look at level 4, 4s is more stable than 4p, 4p is more stable than 4d. Okay? Now, in fact, remember what I said before about um, these uh, energy of these, uh, 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 you know, these, these levels as you go up, right? When you calculate this, we can see it even when we're calculating this with the um, one uh, electron system. And the thing you note is when, if you were to make calculation with energy values, right, uh, with these binding energy values, if you just plug in numbers into the, uh, this equation right here, and you just substitute at the bottom here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, different uh, principal quantum number values, you know that when we made the calculation with the first three, we get these numbers, right? We get negative RH Z squared for the first uh, principal quantum number. For the second principal quantum number, we get one-fourth of this number. For the third principal quantum number, we get one-ninth of that number, okay? So in other words, the, num the, the, the values of these binding energy keeps going less and less negative. But what you notice also is that the difference between this number and this, this, this number right here for the second level is bigger than the difference between this number and this number right here, which is the difference between the energy of the second level and the third level. And that's illustrated by this energy diagram here. Now, you can ignore these numbers for now, and you can just imagine calculating the energy values for each of those uh, principal quantum number, n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And what you see in this diagram is you can clearly see that there is a big gap between 1 and 2, a smaller gap between 2 and 3, an even smaller gap between 3 and 4, and so on. As you go higher and higher, you notice that the energy levels get really, really, really close together. So there's only a very small energy that separates, let's say, n equals 10 and n equals 11, for example. Okay? Now, why is that important? If you go back to this diagram right here for the polyelectronic atom, because these energies get closer and closer together at the higher level, what happens is orbital penetrations plays a more important role when you're talking about these higher uh, energy orbital. And why is that? Because if you look at this right here, we start our lowest energy orbital is 1s, and then we follow that by 2s and then 2p, that still makes sense. And then we go to 3s, which is the next level, and that's higher in energy. So that still makes sense, right? And then we go to 3p. But if you look at 4s and 3d, you notice that we actually, the 4s orbital is actually slightly lower in energy in comparison to the 3d orbital. And that's not what you expect, because you actu actually expect the 3d to be a lower energy orbital than the 4s, right? Because the 3d is in a lower principal quantum number. But because the energy of these higher level orbitals are so close together, the 3D and the 4S are already very close together. Because the S has the ability to penetrate, it's able to lower the energy of the 4S orbital 
just slightly below what the energy of a 3D orbital would be. So then when you put in electrons, instead of going 3p to 3d, you would actually go 3p and then 4s and then 3d. Okay? So then you might ask the question, well, how would I know which way the energy goes because I don't have the ability to actually calculate this energy, right? Because we know that in this class we don't really know, we, we don't really have the mathematical sophistication to actually calculate these energy values for each one of these uh, orbitals. Well, there's an easy way uh, to know how the orbitals are stacked up together in terms of their energy, and this is what we refer to as the Aufbau or the building up principle. This is a German word that means building up. And the idea here is, uh, the, the idea is very straightforward. What you need to do is basically uh, create this diagram right here with n equals 1 at the bottom and n equals 7 at the top. And you create four columns. The columns correspond to the s orbital, the p orbital column, the d orbital column, and then the f orbital column. And this is just basically, if you think about it as an axis, the y axis is your principal quantum number and the x-axis is your angular momentum quantum number. If you go and then you just fill it up, there's seven s orbitals and then two to six for p orbitals, three to six for d orbitals, and four and five for f orbitals. And what you do is you, then you draw these diagonal lines, diagonal arrows right here, okay? And those diagonal arrows is what informs you as far as how the sequence of orbitals that you have to follow. So this is one s, you start with 1s, you follow that by 2s, and then you follow that by 2p and 3s, and then you follow that by 3p and 4s, you notice, not 3d, because the arrow goes this way. And then you go 3d, and instead of 4d, you go 3d, uh, instead of, uh, you go 3d, and then you go, instead of 4s, you go 4p, right, because we already used up 4s, but in, from 4p, instead of going 4d, you actually go 5s first, because when we calculate the energy, the 5s energy is actually lower than the 4d or the 4f energy, okay? So this is sort of like a, uh, a way for you to remember the ranking of the orbital energy for a polyelectronic atom.